Hey there YouTube, Brad here, aka Unique FLH. Let's talk about HomeKit. Now we could talk about my Harleys, uh, Turing Models, FLH stuff. We could talk about my 2010 Audi A3, which has been slightly modified. Or we could talk about when an old dude does BMX stuff. But as I said, this is about HomeKit. Today, let's do a tour of my smart home. Now, the plan to do the smart home tour here is to base it on the home app as it's shown in uh, Mac OS. I'll do some screenshots, we'll walk through room by room or section by section and I'll kind of highlight some of the things that I've done or some of the accessories that are within each room. Before I start working my way down the home app sidebar, I'll explain most of my home control is done via an iPhone and I keep most of my accessories in the favorites of the home page. It just makes sense for how I utilize things, how I action accessories. One of the things to look at here is the camera view. I have several uh, real link cameras that are connected via home bridge. I also have an Akara camera. You'll notice that there's some placeholder images for cameras within other rooms. I'm not really a big fan of having a bunch of cameras inside my house. So what I did is I found a way to create dummy cameras solely for the purpose of having accessory control via the Apple TV interface. There's another video on that that kind of explains it. It's on my channel. You can check it out if you want. Okay, starting to make our way down the home app sidebar. First tab is automations. I have a lot of automations. My understanding is Apple's limit is a hundred not sure that that's a hard limit but i'm constantly pushing that that threshold um, i do a lot of weird shenanigans with automations that convert to shortcut for checking the status of accessories within a room whenever a device is turned off the only reason that i do this is for my wall mounted ipad um, there's a whole nother video on that gets kind of crazy, but it gives me quick view as to whether there's any accessories on within a, any room at any given time. All right, next stop as we work our way down the list is climate. This is kind of self-explanatory. Um, I have fans in several rooms. I have groups of switch switchbot controlled blinds in a couple rooms and I have temp sensors in pretty much every room of the house uh, and I have temp sensors in my refrigerator and freezer also there's one outside that uh, monitors my hot tub okay one potentially interesting thing about the way that I monitor climate inside my house is I've created temp sensors that are available over ethernet and eventually feed their way back into my raspberry pi and then into homebridge it probably would take its own video to explain but essentially i can go to any ethernet outlet in my house i can plug in one of my temp sensors and i can configure it as a room temp monitor for that specific location all right uh stepping down the sidebar let's skip over lights i'll cover those as we get into individual rooms um, security security stuff is relatively tame for the most part i have a front door lock that's smart i have a garage door controller that's smart i have a tile in here for security that allows me to adjust the state of the akara security features i guess the a couple things that could be considered interesting 
are the tiles for my Audi and my Chevy Traverse locks. These are not smart capable cars. I did a bunch of weirdness and I have wires running from the GPIO pins on my Homebridge Raspberry Pi. Those wires are soldered into extra car lock key fobs that I had laying around. So my home bridge essentially pushes a button on a key fob for me, uh, actually two, and it locks my car doors for stuff that sits outside. All right, moving on to the speakers and TV section. Uh, a lot of stuff in the house. I have a total of six Apple TV 4Ks uh, spread throughout the house. I also have a total of 13 HomePod or HomePod minis. Two of them are the OG HomePods, the big ones. Uh, two are the new Gen 2 HomePods. Then I have, what does that leave, nine HomePod minis. Also in the house, I have two Airport Express. Uh, one of them is wired to outdoor speakers through an amplifier. The other one is wired to my home receiver system in my basement, uh, 7 to 1 surround sound, and I can use that for airplay. All right, uh, to the rooms. Uh, first room on my list is the living room. You can see here I have an Apple TV 4K. I have a HomePod Mini, uh, just a set of lamps. I have some blinds that are controlled via SwitchBot blind tilt motors. Um, maybe the only thing interesting in this room is the fireplace. Um, it's a gas fireplace that uses a blower. I ended up using a relatively unique solution to get that to work within the system um, because I not only had to turn on the blower but I also had to close a low voltage relay to get the, the fireplace to ignite. That's probably its own video if anybody's interested. Let me know and maybe I'll do something there. Um, oh, also in this room, I do have a dummy camera. This, you can see the placeholder up there on the snapshot. This, again, is just so that I can get access to those room accessories via the Apple TV interface. Okay, moving on to the kitchen. Um, relatively basic here. HomePod Mini, Apple TV that's on a wall-mounted television. I have a pendant light above my sink. I have a normal ceiling light. Also have a ceiling fan in that room. Um, I have installed the dummy camera here, set up through HomeBridge and FFmpeg so that I can control these devices via Apple TV. Um, temp sensors. I have several temp sensors in this in this space, including a refrigerator and a freezer temp sensor. Uh, I keep forgetting to mention that we have door sensors and window sensors on everything that is below the second floor. Uh, also in this room, for obvious reasons, I have an Akara water leak sensor. You can see that up at the top. That's underneath the kitchen sink. Okay, moving on to the dining room. Fairly basic stuff. HomePod Mini, uh, ceiling lights. I do have a dummy camera set up here so that I can access the accessories via Apple TV again. Um, temp sensors and window sensors. Also in here we have a group of three SwitchBot tilt blinds. That are incorporated into HomeKit. Next is a half bathroom on our first floor. Just call it a powder room. Very basic stuff. Just some lights and a fan that are automated. The next room on the list is the master bedroom. Nothing super exciting here. Uh, Apple TV, HomePod. Uh, this is one of the OG uh, big HomePods, first gen. 
Also have a Miro's accent lamp. I have Miro's underbed light strips. Have a floor lamp that's controlled via a Lutron lamp controller. Other than that, we just have blinds and a dummy camera in there. Okay, moving on to the primary bathroom. Pretty basic stuff here. Uh, lights are controlled through automation, so is the exhaust fan. I have a dummy camera in here so that I can access the accessories via Apple TV again. Um, the other two items in here are the curling iron and the hair straightener. These are both on smart plugs, and I have them set up on an automation that if wifey leaves the house, based upon her location, it's going to check the status of those two items and if they are on it will send her a text message telling her to turn them back off uh, next room is the primary bedroom closet uh, really nothing much to see here just a smart switch that controls the light okay the second floor landing uh, this is an open area it just has a light I do have a HomePod here. I also have my SwitchBot Mini Hub 2. That's what all of my SwitchBot, SwitchBot blinds connect to. All right, second floor landing bathroom. Nothing major here, just a vanity light and uh, a smart operated exhaust fan. All right, moving on. Uh, next room on my list is what we call a dressing closet. This is a kind of an extra bedroom we've had since my daughter moved out. Uh, we converted it over to a large walk-in closet for the wife. Uh, we just have a smart lamp in there controlled through a Wemo smart plug. Uh, also some fan lights. Uh, I believe those are Hue bulbs. Um, these are controlled via a Lutron Pico remote that's incorporated into HomeKit using the Leap plugin. Kind of a cool thing for HomeBridge. Um, good plugin. I use it a lot. Next room on my list is my home office. Uh, you'll see there's a dummy camera up there. I have a Miros Accent light. I also have a HomePod Mini. Um, a TV in the room is also fed by a Apple TV 4K. And the next room on the list is our main floor. Uh, we have a hallway light, we have entry lights. Um, the night light is actually a Acara M1 hub, serves dual purpose as the security. Uh, we also have the climate tile here for the Ecobee. Um, You'll notice that there's also a motion detector up there. That is to trigger my wall-mounted iPad, and that's where I run Biz Designer. There's another video on that. I think I mentioned that already. Next room on the list is the laundry room. Literally only one smart switch in here to control the light. Um, thinking about getting one of the present sensors, um, the FP2s from Acara. For that room, not sure yet. It's not that serious. All right, next is the garage. Um, HomePod Mini out there, Apple TV. I do have a television mounted to the wall. Um, we have a Miro's garage door opener, ceiling lights. Uh, I also have a workbench light strip. You can kind of see that here. Um, I do have an extra smart plug that the Miro's garage door opener is plugged into. I just use that in case I ever have to reboot the garage door opener controller remotely. All right, next is a basement bathroom, lights, fan. There is a HomePod Mini in there. Um, pretty straightforward. And as a side note in the basement bathroom, just because of different stages of how my house has been over the 20 years that we've lived here in this room this is where my Reolink NVR and a second 
raspberry pie for home bridge. That's it. Really bizarre place to put it, but nonetheless, this is where it ended up. Okay, moving on to the basement. Down at the bottom, I have two outlets that are uh, smart. It's a connect sense and wall outlet. Down here, I also have a LG TV that's HomeKit capable. I have an Apple TV 4K. Uh, HomePods, these are my Gen 2 full size. Uh, they are default audio from the Apple TV. I also have an AirPort here. That's what feeds my Yamaha 7 to 1 surround sound receiver uh, so that I can airplay to a full on audio system. Um, Miro's light strips are under some furniture. I also have a Hue accent light and I have Hue play bulbs. Down here I also have an extra HomePod mini that's on a battery base that's actually assigned to my exterior room so that I can just take it outside and I can play across the network and use that as, a, uh, a, as an audio destination. And to the basement bedroom here, I have another dummy camera set up, um, have a fan, space heater, lights, uh, Miro's accent light, and under bed, light strips from Miro's. I also have a HomePod mini here. When I built this room, there's some in-wall shelves and kind of for right now, they're accumulating all of the crazy boxes that I have from Apple and other smart home manufacturers. Okay, and that brings us to the network room. This is kind of the utility room in my house. Um, you'll notice that there is a camera in there. Um, I'll kind of explain that in a second. It's for um, monitoring of emergency situations. Um, also have a light, Raspberry Pi. Um, I have a reset plug for my Rio Link and VR, but I'll kind of explain the rest of it as best I can. Some of this is going to require its own video. Okay, all of the stuff on the wall here, this is currently run to uh, attic antenna. I don't get cable anymore. I do everything. Everybody does everything streaming anymore, right? So, uh, cable was existing in the house. I'm now using it for an antenna. You'll also see my modem here, gigabit fiber, and my router, which is the Ubiquiti or Unify UDM. Okay, so here's where things get a little difficult to explain. Um, I've done a lot of stuff to try to incorporate dumb accessories into my smart home. Most of it's done via Homebridge and the Raspberry Pi hardware, but we will see what we can explain here. Um, I do have a laptop down there. It's just a Windows box that, uh, with an external hard drive that I have DVDs ripped to. Um, over on the wall next to it, I have an old iPad mini um, that I run, used to run the home app on. It doesn't work anymore. Over here, I have a relatively inexpensive amplifier that I got off of Amazon. It's connected to the Airport Express above it and ends up feeding speakers that are out on my patio. Okay, to try to keep this as simple as possible, we'll kind of work across this photo. Um, have a Lutron bridge and a Philips Hue hub. Next to the Philips Hue hub is a low voltage relay. That is wired into my, to my dumb doorbell. So when somebody pushes the dumb button on the outside of my house, it closes that relay it then sends that closed circuit signal to the Raspberry Pi that's down below it. And that is a way that I've incorporated my dumb doorbell into the smart home ecosystem. Also on that Raspberry Pi, there's a relay board. That relay board is what 
controls the key fobs to lock my cars. Uh, over to the right, you'll see a 16 port managed switch. I also have the little ethernet uh, biscuit connector for the temp sensors that I created. And then mounted inside the wall is a 24 port patch panel that feeds ethernet throughout the house. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, finally here in the network room, I also have some alarm sensors. These are also sensors that are generally added via the GPIO pins on my Raspberry Pi. I have water sensing cable. I also have a relay that is attached to my dumb whole home smoke alarm system. All of these feed circuit status back to the Raspberry Pi and then they're incorporated into HomeKit using a HomeBridge plugin. So these are more examples of dumb devices that the Raspberry Pi hardware allows me to add into the system. And now to the exterior room. You'll see up at the top, I have all my real link cameras. They're included in the system using the FFmpeg plugin from HomeBridge. Uh, I have all my outdoor lighting. There's a lot of different switches that do different shenanigans. Uh, security stuff, again, we've kind of covered the front door. We've also covered how the, the Audi and the Chevy are integrated into the system for locking the doors. Um, I've mentioned the patio airport uh, that's in my utility room, and then also the HomePod Mini is included in here uh, using a battery base so I can just take it outside and listen to it while I'm in the hot tub. Um, I think that's kind of it. Oh, and by the way, here's some images of my outdoor cameras. They're all real link POE style cameras. Um, also, the patio speakers and the patio cameras out there also for monitoring the hot tub. And then additionally, I have a box outside that's automated and tied into a camera for deliveries. So I get notifications and a snapshot whenever deliveries are made at the house. Okay, and finally, we're at the monitoring station. Now this is a pretend room that I've added into HomeKit to store all of my dummy switches that have been added through HomeBridge. It also stores all the Pico remotes that are added through the Leap plugin in HomeBridge and the dummy switches that act as room monitors for shortcuts and automation. Um, this is what I referred to earlier as being able to check the status of all the devices in the room through automation. It's done via dummy switches and this is where I keep these within the home app. And that is an overview or tour of my smart home. If you made it this far, um, thanks, because uh, this is way longer than I thought it would be. If you have any questions, throw a comment down there. Um, if you don't, thanks for watching. Thanks for making it this far.